what's going on what's going on y'all so this is day two of the day three podcast so i'm calling it day three podcast because i just started getting back on here and uh chopping up with y'all just yesterday the uh the third day of january but it was the third day of january yesterday but anyway that's when i started so i'm calling it day three podcast all right so the title of this one is going to be about Bitcoin Layer 2, which is, uh, I think, a very under underestimated uh, technological advancement when it comes to money. Being the fact, not that it's solely bit, built on Bitcoin, which is a very solid foundation as far as network security and uh, immutability of the protocol, right? Protocol can't be changed and the security of the network is quite uh it's like fort knox uh to say the least because of the growing amount or the growth of the network over time which you've seen you've seen the amount of miners contributing to the network using hash power this hash power makes it very difficult to uh to change transactions to uh, erase transactions and so forth and that's something you want when you are dealing with a time chain. This is what a lot of people I'm finding to, uh, they, they, they're considering Bitcoin to be a, a, a time chain and not so much as a blockchain. Abandoning the, 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 uh, the original terminology of what it is to be a open source ledger for time stamping transactions. So in order for it to be, um, to have integrity for it to be reliable those timestamp transactions cannot be changed um, and what makes it more difficult to do that is the amount of hash power that's used to mine bitcoin and uh, the growth has been so su- substantial since its inception that um, like i said in previous video even pullbacks or corrections in in the mining industry still leaves uh, the mining industry very robust compared to what it was in the pre- in the previous bull cycle. So, anyways, so when you have that type of foundation, that type of security, then layer twos tend to be pretty awesome um, and and pretty authentic. Um, so this leads me into talking a little bit about my experience with being in El Salvador. Um, the first country to adopt Bitcoin as legal tender. And uh, currently, though, I'm in, as you can see here, Mexico City. However, I've spent quite a bit of time in El Salvador within the last month, month and a half, to see it for myself, what it looks like for a country to adopt Bitcoin as legal tender and for a country to be on a Bitcoin standard. This is something that You know, in 2017, when I first heard about, well, actually 2016, when I first heard about Bitcoin, 2017 is when I got engaged more. During that time, you know, I I, I would have never thought that a country would actually use it or that it would even be used as money and, you know, in that type of real way. Fast forward now, I had to see it for myself. El Salvador is a very raw, uh, nature-filled, Verdura, uh, green, lush country. Uh, it's very raw. It's not anything like uh, a major city like Mexico City, which is the largest city in North America. It's nothing like New York, forget about it. And that's where the magic is for me with a country like El Salvador, even its capital, which is, uh, which uh, there is plans for the capital to be uh, titled Bitcoin City. And this is going to probably add, uh, I would say, have Bitcoin play a major role in this economic and infrastructure, ec- economy and infrastructure in that in the capital. Um, but the the fact that the city is still has a rural feeling to it is what I like about it. I like, I'm really not a city guy anymore. For those who's been following my uh, videos from years back 
I used to do videos in the south uh, cities of uh, North Carolina um, and in New York City, right, where I worked in banking and finance for some time. And now I'm in another major city. And uh, maybe it's growing on, it's growing, the, the rural vibes are growing on me, right? Agriculture, um, the slower pace of living, the more relaxing, getting in the sun. As you see, I'm always finding my way in the sun, y'all. I'm in the sun right now, sunbathing as we talk. Um, but anyways, I digress. So yeah, El Salvador, the people are very warm. Uh, there's, a, there's a good feeling there uh, with the leadership of their president who is a Bitcoiner, someone who believes in sound money principles and a organic economy. As um, for those who need the proof of that, that the president is pretty much a sound money person, not just a, uh, not just someone who's looking to try to get attention using Bitcoin. Look at their balance sheet. Look at the country's balance sheet. I mean, the, this country doesn't borrow money. There's not much I hear or read about social programs there or endless money printing like we see in the United States and other developed countries, developed nations. Um, you know, in fact, they're on pace. They're planning to pay off all of their uh, country's debt that's owed to the IMF and which will allow them to be fully operating if they choose to on a Bitcoin standard. It is an option aside from the US dollar, which is their uh, nation's currency as well, or which is the currency, which is the currency they're using, not their nation's currency rather. But since they don't have control over the US dollar's uh, issuance, um, then of course that's why the, the president positioned the Bitcoin uh, standard there as a, uh, we call it an escape valve. So anyways, uh, the, it, it, and, and then to just swing over to the, uh, to the idea of the safety of El Salvador. I felt very safe in El Salvador. Maybe one time in an Uber, I got dropped off accidentally uh, in the wrong side of town. Well, which I perceived to be the wrong side of town. But it, it looked a little, you know, it, it gave me flashbacks of, you know, where I, where my early, uh, upbringings was but nonetheless I had nothing to worry about it, it was very safe uh, almost militarized style policing you'll see in certain areas but for the most it's quiet didn't see not any chemtrails in the sky no planes uh, just nature man uh, heavy Bitcoin adoption was really localized in the beach area uh, El Zante maybe going up to El Tunco a little bit. And um, there, you know, lightning network was uh, used. You know, those lightning wallets was being used to uh, buy services, to buy goods, to buy um, food and so forth. So, and the people are familiar with it and the people know about Bitcoin. That's the main thing too. Um, all of my drivers knew about Bitcoin and they were all hopeful about the future of the country. Um, so yeah, that was my take on it. Um, layer twos, man, that, that brings me to layer twos, y'all. Layer twos, the Bitcoin layer two is quite interesting. There's some updates uh, that I wanted to share. One, it's not really an update. So of course, uh, Bitcoin being adopted as legal tender in El Salvador is a huge, huge layer two uh, use case or application use case. Um, just the fact that it's being used as legal tender in a real economy, um, in a real country with real people who um, accept payment in Bitcoin and it is made possible via uh, Lightning, Lightning, the Lightning Network uh, through the Strike app. And I believe there's another app, I think Bitcoin Beach has an app. There's few Lightning apps that are available. and. They make it possible for uh, instant payments and real-time payments. Even at the airport, uh, leaving El Salvador, I was able to purchase uh, a cup of coffee for a friend of mine using Bitcoin Lightning there. So it's accepted. Bitcoin is accepted, and um, it's just, it's just, it was just very interesting to me. It was very almost surreal. So the fact that that is authentic, right? You could feel it 
can feel it, uh, you're really living it. I mean, we may be living in a simulation right now, but as far as we're concerned, if I, you know, if we hit something right now, if we get punched, whatever happens, it's gonna hurt. We're gonna feel it. So I'm gonna just assume this is reality we in. And nonetheless, uh, the, the Bitcoin application layer two um, gives you that, right? Um, also, I just read recently, I'm gonna try to keep this short, y'all. I'm actually over 10 minutes now, but recently MicroStrategies um, is, they're talking about planning to build on the, le on the Lightning Network, on layer two of Bitcoin. They are wanting to uh, provide cybersecurity for their company's website um, by uh, stopping any type of spam or any type of uh, bots or you know any type of uh, shady activity coming to their website by implementing a Bitcoin Lightning Network or trying to attach it to the Bitcoin Lightning Network. What will be required ideally is that people that visit the website would have to make a deposit in sats or very small amounts of bitcoin um, in order to uh, authenticate themselves and to make sure that they're that they are uh, not nefarious actors and that is a great line of defense when it comes to protecting um, a website a company's website so uh, this is uh, been stated by michael saylor ceo of Micro Strategies, and I think that's dope, man, because uh, Micro Strategies is a tech company, and he's really, you know, that company seems to be going headfirst into Bitcoin, not just holding it, holding mass amounts of it for his balance sheet, but building with Lightning, you know, building on Lightning and bringing value to the company, cutting costs probably on, you know, these unnecessary, I would say, tertiary cybersecurity uh roles and stuff like that so and protecting their protecting their brand and their and their website so i think that's dope i think this is showing authenticity that bitcoin captures <laughs> being that it is very secure it had it offers a layer two solution for companies and for countries um as opposed I've, I'm, I'm seeing a lot with other uh with cryptocurrencies not bitcoin that offer layer two solutions well i wouldn't even say solutions but layer twos that are looking for value they're looking for use case um why do i say that um i think that what one of the main things that was being uh solved with these other coins that have layer two solution or layer twos is uh authenticating being able to authenticate um, we're seeing that authentication is being used in a clever way or may could be possibly used in a clever way through micro strategy uh, through making sat deposits in order to use a website and i think that 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 idea was even offered to uh instead of the blue check mark for twitter that was going to be offered as well as a way to authenticate twitter users but and I, you know uh other cryptocurrencies want to have authentication through nfts they want uh we've seen I, I really believe that the art thing uh you know i have my opinion on that i don't think that's necessary um i believe that DeFi had a nice experimental run and i think it will continue to happen um because there's not enough information to uh out there that's really teaching people who are new to cryptocurrency about how yield works and um but for the most all most DeFi projects have been proven to be um zero sum more so in a complicated more more complicated zero sums and more simple doubler and tripler zero sums not real yield meaning that there tend to be far more uh losers of their crypto than gainers um but and then also to add in metaverse metaverse is another uh value that these coins are looking for because the metaverse isn't improving it isn't improving the real world it's more so just looking to create <laughs> a whole new situation um to 
create value, right? They're trying to look for value. And uh, it seems like the layer two in Bitcoin so far, the direction could be, and the direction likely will be just improving real life, improving companies, cybersecurity, improving uh, countries, uh, economic, uh, monetary systems. And with you know the fact that instant payments are now available, maybe not able to be scaled on a global sense just yet, but uh, I think that should soon come. So anyway, I, I just want to keep this. I try to keep this short, y'all. Uh, it's 15 minutes. Uh, hope you, if you got to the end of the video, salute to you. Um, and that's all I got for now. Till next time.